So you need no microcontroller. It is a truly wireless um, sound effect board for his costume. So you can have monster effects while you walk around. He controls it with a little hidden dongle in his staff. Um, Dino came by. Usually has robots, but this time he has a garage and pool automation server. Uh, uh, Soy Nerdito came by with a Wi-Fi controlled LED skull, which he says is for Halloween, but we think... It's all stickers. That's right. We saw a lot of these at Maker Fair and people showing them off. Um, all you have to do is email support at adafruit.com and you get it as seen on the show and tell sticker. We do this every week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Lady Ada, how did they get on the show and tell? If you'd like to be on the show and tell and show off your projects and be written on this piece of paper next week, you can do that. It's so easy. All you need is a project. And it should probably be kind of sciencey or crafty or whatever, but if you're really... And this is going to be the Arduino Gemma. So mm. um, basically all the great tutorials um, from the world of Trinket and Gemma are all going to be... Uh, uh, ready to go for the official Arduino Gemma, and it'll be uh, a lot easier for educators, workshops, everyone to have this um, as uh, as something they can just have their their students do because it'll be part of the IDE. You don't have to do any settings or anything different. Yeah. And this is going to be a neat collaboration. We're going to make them here in the USA, so this will be a US made Arduino, mm -hmm. and Arduino will probably make Arduino Gemmas uh, in Italy or maybe even worldwide. So this is going to be neat. This is the 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 first of many. We hope have not only Gemma, but a lot more in And then store. this is only the first. And this is only the first. We can, we can say this is the first so, one, not um, the only. Yeah, so one thing um, that I wanted to do. It's a lot like the Gemma, um, and the silk screen on the back is gonna change. Right now it still says Adafruit, but um, first thing that changes, we moved from a mini USB and it's gonna be a micro USB. Um, and the micro USB is, uh, micro USB is more standard, so we're moving to micro USB for everything. It's, it's slow going, because we have a lot of fan, which is a little smaller, but we have the pick and place capability to ha our pick and place and stencil can handle it very easily. We still have a reset button, power, and um, or a couple AA batteries, um, or you can power it from USB, so you can power from either. Uh, and then, but now we've added an on-off switch. Yay! So you can um, uh, use the on-off switch to power your project on and off. A lot of people had an yeah. issue where they would have a battery, like a LiPo battery with a wearable, and they couldn't turn it off. They'd have to unplug the battery, which very high quality uh, frequency analyzer for okay. like a hundred bucks. All right, next up, wearables. So this week we have an amazing. Now we're ready for the NYC Halloween parade. She could be RoboCop or Terminator, or to go with my cyber tank girl costume, I'm passing her off as my kangaroo boyfriend. How are you dressing up your pets for Halloween this year? Let us know in the comments or on our weekly show and tell hangout on Google Plus. Check out our Halloween playlist for some more electronic costumes you could build this year, and subscribe for more wearables from Adafruit. Okay, coming soon okay. to theaters. Yeah, the cool thing about this project is so, um, Becky's dog likes to make eye contact with people, like, you know, dogs that they, yeah, they're yeah. looking for, like, you know, they, they want to talk to you. And uh, so when the dog looks at you and then the laser focuses like, on you, absorb, yeah, absorb. so the next thing is like, well, what's going to happen next? So very cool. Um, next up, uh, 3D printing. We have a couple of videos this week. Um, we're catching up on stuff. So um, this week, we're going to show last week's video first. This is an amazing Halloween project with more lasers. This is a laser, laser theme night. People love lasers. 3D Thursday. I'm Noah, and today we're taking a look at making a sci fi inspired 3D printed gas mask. It's got hints of Star Wars, Fallout, and Guardians of the Galaxy. It's got EL wire, lasers, and of course, NeoPixel LEDs. 
In this project, we're mounting glowy electronics to some 3D printed parts to light up your face. A 3D printed gas mask makes an interesting addition to any Halloween costume and may even turn some heads at Comic-Con. This has three main pieces to it, the mask, the respirator, and the costume goggles. Details like the grill and the secondary respirators and conduits make this an intricate looking build. You can get the electronic goodies used in this project from the shop on Adafruit.com. So I'm putting together this design in 123D, which happens to be our go-to tool for making parts for 3D printing. To get the base shape, I had to measure various features on my head, like the distance between my temples, my cheeks, and of course my chin. It's probably also a good idea to add a bit of padding, just in case we need some breathing room. I mean, it is supposed to be a gas mask after all, or at least look like one. A total of 16 parts make up this project, which can be either printed in ABS or PLA. We of course recommend printing in PLA to avoid any warping issues. All the parts are of course snap fit together, making this an easy to assemble project. And they're also available to download and modify for free, like always. If you have a well calibrated 3D printer, you can just print it overnight. You probably even get a teen and a 24 NeoPixel ring. Both of these rings are wired to our Gemma, which is our bite-sized Arduino compatible microcontroller. These lovely components are then mounted to the printed parts by snapping them into place. You can of course get the full tutorial for this project by checking out our guide on the Adafruit Learning System. You can find the link in the description below. Everything is wired up with silicone coated stranded wires for more flexibility than wrap wire. A LiPo battery and slide switch make powering these pixels compact and convenient. EL wire is strung throughout the project, starting from the opening on the side of the mask through some conduit, the secondary respirator, and through various openings in the larger respirator leading up through the other side. Like I said, basically throughout the whole project. Costume goggles make up the top part of the mask and are mounted with a binder clip. The cool glowing rings around the eyes are special mounting rings that have a channel that allows the EL wire to be clipped into place. And for a more personal touch, I popped out one of the eyepieces and designed a rather stylish eyepiece that could have a freaking laser beam mounted to it. It totally matches my rather lazy visual symmetry. Appropriately sized slits in the mask allow you to strap an elastic band while the costume goggles already have one included. I added a bit of weatherproof foam with self-adhesive which makes wearing it a bit more comfortable. Don't forget to check out the Adafruit Arduino libraries and our demo sketches. You too can get Phil B's legendary utility knife code. And that's it! The final design goes well with a cyborg soldier type character or even a futuristic 3D printing operator. So what ideas are you thinking about adding to your projects? Why not let me know in the comments below? And if your brain is hungry for some more 3D printing goodness, we do have some more projects to catch up on. Wearables, cosplay props, useful tools shaped like weapons, and even sharp pointy things that are actually flexible and squishy. Thanks so much for watching. If you dig this project, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Also, subscribing to our channel gives you first comment superpowers. I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Okie dokie, and we're back. All right, so um, next up, a little bit of, uh, I think I'll, I'll save that one for another time. Okay. Because we had two videos, but I'm gonna just do one. because We'll we do are, the, we we'll, we'll do, products. yeah, we have a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, Raspberry Pi news, a couple things this week. One, um, this is a cool post on uh, Hackaday today. I need to uh, read a little bit about it more, but it was 121 uh, Raspberry Pi cluster with uh, our Pi TFTs. Which is a, a pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, it's some. Um, it's a um, deploy. It's a resin IO deployment server. Yeah. So they they actually have to test like 120 different deployments or something. I, I mean, I don't know exactly know why they need 120 Raspberry Pis, but um, they have it. Yeah, and the other thing is um, we have plenty of Raspberry Pi Model Bs and B pluses now. So Yay. we've had B pluses for a bit, but now we have Model Bs. They did. They're they're making them again because a lot of people still needed them. So we had a lot of customers that were using them for things, and they're still great. I mean, they're perfectly fine. So um, that is what we're up to. Okay, so um, before we get on to new products, uh, we've got a couple of things here. First, the code is Glamour. Glamour. And um, people are probably wondering why the code is Glamour. So this is a little bit of news. So uh, I think we talked about this briefly last week when I was on the show, but in um, the current issue of Glamour on newsstands now, on page 166, there is this lady Ada, soldering with machinery in the background. You are now in a glamour photo spread. I'm glamorous. Yeah. Well, it's a little, it's a small photo. Yeah, but it's really cool. So this is on newsstands now, and they did 35 women. Um, the top, uh, it's called 35 under 35, the top young women in tech. And so they profiled five, and uh, you're one of the five, and then they have the rest of them listed there. So this is what it looks like on the newsstands, if you, if you want to grab this. 
And then when you get to uh, page 166, there's a Lady Ada. Beats. So, um, okay. Yeah, so that's, that's her. It was a big deal for us to have this photo shoot here. Um, if, I'll go to the overhead. Um, there you are. So this is the first time a Samsung pick and place machine and I think uh, uh, a Weller, um, sorry, a Metcal. Metcal. Metcal was in um, Glamour, yeah. but not the last time, I suspect. No. So um, if you happen to see uh, this on the newsstands, you can take a look. It's a very highly circulated magazine. So one of the things we like is a whole bunch of people. And there's some other really great people. Yeah. And there's a um, small, it's I is in there, um, and she was on the show last week. So uh, oddly enough, too, Glamour Magazine has profiled the most open source hardware uh, company founders. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> um, so Glamour's leading the charge so with that. So check it out. Yeah, and there's, and there's it's also online if you don't want to, I mean, you should buy it if you're going to yeah. read it, but you can also Okay. So, um, so that's okay. why we have the code. So, Lady Ada, it's time. <sighs> it's okay. new product time. There is a pile of new products. I know. All right. Okay. I'll we'll give you a little bit of a break. I'll yeah. do the first one. Okay. All right. Well, you cannot buy this from us, but it is a new product. It is the Hackaday 10th anniversary. People who um, are new to the show um, and don't know me, I started Hackaday 10 years ago. And uh, so I had to record a little video and talk about why I made the okay. site. And uh, um, one of the things they said is, you know, the site never belonged to me. In fact, I don't run the site anymore. A whole group of editors and people, um, past, present, and future, will continue to run mm -hmm. Hackaday forever. Mm -hmm. um, but what I wanted to do is have something special. So you and I chatted. We chatted with Hackaday. And we said, let's do something really neat. And so we did a, um, a Hackaday trinket version. This is one of the first times where we did co-branding. Um, with a um, yeah, we did a dig button a long, long time ago. Yeah. So, so yeah, this is it's just like the Trinket Five Volt that you know and love, except instead of uh, being blue, it's now black with white silk screen. And on the back, we replaced the Adafruit logo and the little bootloader note with um, the Hackaday skull and crossbones, which actually fits quite nicely right between these little holes. And then it says Hackaday celebrates ten yeah. years. What's cool so. is um, I designed that logo and I made the site ten years ago. And I always thought the logo um, it's great was, on a PCB. Per was perfect for PCBs. Yeah, it's perfect because it silk yeah. screens very nicely. So yeah. yeah, what a great logo. So um, you can only get it on From the Hackaday store. On the Hackaday store, but this is going to be tonight's prize. What? Yeah, so I'm going to give away a special edition. Okay, Hackaday. it's special it's edition. Yeah. Special edition. We don't know if we're going to be making more. It's up to them. But yeah, yep. we have we have a couple extra. We'll give away one tonight. So, yeah. so pay attention. We'll, yeah, I can't wait to see what type of projects people do because they're going to do them and they'll send them. Hack this is a Gemma in comparison to how, how big yeah. it is. So, yeah, these are small chips. What's funny is the AT Tiny uh, 85 is about the same size yeah. as the at Mega 328, the QFNs or the. This one has many more pins, but it's not that much bigger than this. Yeah. Maybe a half a million or a million or more on each side. Okay. Okay. Next up, um, we now have other editions of. Eagles. So yeah. for all the folks who asked, they said, well, you know, I really want this version, that version. We're adding all of the versions of Eagle. Um, one of the things that we do with um, anyone who buys Eagle is we give you a free embroidered badge um, that has Eagle on it. And also, um, according to Cadsoft, the makers of Eagle, we are the number one seller of Eagle in North America already. So um, we've had just this few versions, the Lady Ada blends. And now we're putting the rest in by popular request. So mm -hmm. um, do check it out. Next up, we got a book. This book is a good book. This is Wearable Electronics by Kate Hartman. Kate Hartman wrote all about things. If you want conductive materials, if you want to read about Flora, Lilypad, Gemma, other types of projects, things that you can wear, that you can design. This is great. This is, it's, first off, it's got these beautiful, beautiful photos in it. It's color with awesome photos and diagrams. So like one of the things that really pushes me towards carrying a book is does it have really good um, diagrams and photos because like a lot of books like they kind of, they're very text heavy and it's not, it's hard to learn without a lot of good photos but this has great photos and great projects, a lot of leap pad stuff, there's a little bit of floor stuff as well as well as just like general, just like what are sensors, what kind of sensors can you use? Yeah, here you go, here's a, here's a fun flora hanging out here. Um, so do check it out and uh, pick it up if you're interested in wearables. Kate Harmon is an expert in this. She's been doing this for like six or seven years now. She's really good at it. Yeah. Okay. Next up, uh, we've got a little board. You made this. What's this? 
Uh, this is an update to um, the the gyro, not a delicious um, Greek food, but a gyroscope. Um, we have upgraded from the L3GD20 to the L3GD20H, which is a little bit smaller, but is actually uh, basically code compatible. The ID um, register is a little bit different. The, the pins, little, um, the value of it's different, so you can determine which one you are connected to. Our code actually uses both. It's, it's just fine. And in general, unless you check the ID register, um, all your code will be exactly uh, compatible. Um, this one has a little bit lower power consumption. has much better uh, noise immunity um, for the um, uh, nano... Oh, I can't remember the unit of the noise. But the, the, the root hertz noise for the gyros is much lower, so you should get less drift and... Um, Sort of random walk behavior with your gyro, so check it out. And we also just changed the size a little bit to make it a little bit smaller. But otherwise, it's pin compatible with the old one. It's just an upgrade. ST has been coming out with new sensors constantly, okay. so we want to keep Next, up to date. Uh, uh, this is kind of neat. This seems very boring until you see what it can do. Look at this! Woohoo! <laughs> this has a nice animated yeah. animated GIF or animated GIF, however you want to pronounce it. Let me. Um, Give me one second. Let me yeah. plug this in. This okay. plugs into here, and then this plugs into here. I'm just going to turn on the overhead here. Wait, hold on. I'm not ready. Oh, so yeah, this is the um, the back of it. It's a uh, 32 by 32. One second. Back, I'm going to back, back out back, of back, 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 back. Okay. This is a 32 by 32 matrix, and this one is... Um, we had one that was small and one that was larger, and this is in the middle. So it's got 5 millimeter pitch between each pixel. And uh, it's incredibly bright. You can also hold it up to show. I mean, it's really hard to see because it's so bright. Um, but it's really good to put a diffuser. It's the same stuff that's used in video walls. And uh, I'm driving it here with an Arduino. Um, we have a tutorial on how to use an Arduino to do um, basic driving. Here's a, you know, an LED circle. And um, yeah, it's fun. We already have these, but now we have more of these. Uh, check it out if you want a thousand pixels at your control. Okay, next up. We got some assembled versions of the tea cobbler. Right. Right, right, right. We have uh, cobblers already, but um, we had the tea cobbler and the standard cobbler, and now we have, let me get rid of this. Now we have an uh, assembled tea cobbler. So it's just like the cobbler you know and love, but it's pre assembled and ready to go. Uh, we also have the kit in case you need it for some reason, but if you just want to use this with a breadboard, honestly, I would suggest getting. Um, this pre-assembled tea cobbler it is, is plug and play, um, great for getting solderless projects working with your Raspberry Pi Model B Plus, and it brings out all of the pins, and there's a lot. And it brings it out in the same order that you would see it on uh, diagrams that use the Pi B Plus, so it's very easy to use. Okay. So we also have um, the regular old cobbler now assembled. Also well. assembled, yeah. yeah. Got that. Oh, yeah, it's been this two weeks. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we have the, the Model B standard cobbler also available in assembled format. Um, we started with the kits because that's what we have available. Um, we can get those in the store very fast while we gear up the manufacturing to get these assembled. Um, but now we have them both assembled, so check them out. Okay. Um, this one's mine. So we've been working with lots of educators, and one of the things they ask for is custom packs. So this is a University of Virginia custom Raspberry Pi pack. There was just some specific things they wanted in there for their class. Yeah. Curriculum. So um, we're going to start listing these. One of the things that we do is when a, when a school um, says, here's a pack that we have for our students, and we found this very useful, um, anyone on the internet can order, order it too. Um, the curriculum, sometimes they post up, sometimes they don't, but usually they just want to have a, um, a very specific one with just uh, what their class has. So anyways, got that. Next up, we got this knobby thing. Knobs. Yeah. All sorts of knobs. We have quite a few knobs, actually. Okay. All right. So, do you want me to, do you want yeah. to show all these? Or? Well, uh, yeah, sure. So, this first, let's start with the first one. So, this is a uh, scrubber knob, and these are all the other knobs. I'll just show this one. So, yeah. this is a knob that you, you that I call the scrubber, there's no name for it, but I call it a scrubber knob because often it's called like scrubbing through a video, or scrubbing through audio. And um, the, the thing you would use is a physical knob like this. Um, and this is a uh, knob that works with our rotary encoder. You need to have a D shaft for this. Um, but it plugs right on, like this, and it press fits in. And then um, it basically turns it into a nice knob. And what's nice is that, you know, if, you're, if you want to do like this sort of rotating 
action with your rotary encoder. Um, this is really great. It'll look really good on an on a enclosure or whatever. And uh, it's very basic, but it kind of, it's a lot easier to use than um, one of the knobs that you have to kind of grip because a lot of people are more used to like doing this. I don't know, from exteriors and stuff. Okay. All right, so next up. Yeah, do you want me to show you the the one the rest of them? Because uh, like let's do the the next knob, and then I'll I'll, I'll okay, uh, so like this one yeah this one, and then because well, this one's special. So this one is a really really nice knob, and it's expensive, but it's really really nice. It is a solid, um, I think it's aluminum, um, machined knob. It's like oh, gorgeous. Um, the, well, the photo is really nice too. Yeah. Well, for these, you know, what we can do is we can. Zoom in a little bit. I, I pressed. Oh yeah, we have to. Yeah. So that I don't know if that works. Zoom, 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 no, zoom, 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 zoom. you want to go like this. Okay. Oh wow, I didn't know it did that. It does this. Okay, it does that. Nice. Yeah. Um, come on. Uh, so yeah, this knob is is machine knob and it's like super swanky. And it's like knurled, and um, it uses a set screw, which I, I actually don't have installed here. Um, but you, before you put on this uh, kind of grippy rubber thing, you could put a set screw in. So you can use it with a T18 spliced knob, or you can use it with a rotary encoder. You can use either because there's a set screw instead of a uh, kind of a, a knobby part. And it's just like super fancy. And I really like this. Very, really fancy knob. Really good for your very fancy projects. Okay. Okay. And then next up. Yeah, we have. And then these two we can show together. So this is two slim knobs. And the reason I have these is that a lot of times you have a project, you don't have a lot of space. So you don't want to have a big chunky knob. And I noticed these on like these, uh, these Moog synthesizers. Um, they're very slim. Can you um, draw for the next couple? Yeah. So this one's a tall one. And these are a T18. I'll show that off on the overhead. And they work with potentiometers. And then the, the next one is a shorter version. So it's exact same knob, but there's one that was long and one short. I don't know. I don't know which one you'll need, but choose. And then on the overhead, these are for T18 uh, spline potentiometers. So you just make sure that you have ones that are like the, has like a star shape. And it just press fits right on. And you can see it's a nice slim knob. It does feel really good. It's aluminum. It's got this nice little marker on it. It's kind of a nice little anodized feel to it. It's, it's nice and rugged, but it is um, pretty simple and just fits right on, press fit. Little, and this one's a little short knob. So short and long. Okay. One big, one small. That's the knobs. Okay. So next up we have wire. Wire, but special wire. It's actually not wire, it's cable. Cable. Um, yeah, I won't, I'll show it on the overhead later, but to explain it, this photo is way better than anything I get on the overhead. It's actually coaxial cable. So even though it's about as thick as, as wire you would normally just like use for wiring up a project, it actually has uh, a core um, wire, which is uh, like 30 gauge or 28 gauge, and I don't remember, look at the, the tech specs. A stranded uh, wire, it's like 30 gauge or 28 gauge, and then there's a um, plastic coating, which you can see like right there. And then over that, there's a over braiding sheath. So it's actually got a, a grounding uh, braid on it. So you can use this for, in general, this is used for like EMG wires, EEG wires, or biomedical instrumentation, or like RF sometimes, although it, it's pretty thin. Um, although it, it has, you know, I do see it used for like little, you know, UFL to SMA adapters and such. But the wire is, is super thin. Um, can I show in the overhead? I'll show the wire part. So you can see it's a, it's a cable, but yeah, it's like super thin and extremely flexible. And um, oftentimes you have to buy like 100 meters of this or 100 feet of this, but this is only like 10 feet, and, which is good for like most projects. You want to get a signal from there to here, and you want it to be um, uh, uh, shielded. This is really good. You can ground the shielding to the chassis ground, and then you have your wire going through, and it's less likely to get noisy or um, pick up stray signals um, if it's shielded. So yeah, this is called RG174U wire. For, okay. Even though it's not wire, it's a cable. I don't know. I, I can't help it. It's so thin, I call it a wire. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, we can probably get through these pretty quick. These are the bits 
the carbide bits. Carbide bits. Yeah. Uh, we put in drill bits before, and um, these uh, the drill bits are for just drilling into something. You want to poke a hole into your material, uh, especially PCBs. They're great for that. But these are end mills, so they're they look a lot like bits, but they're not. They have a they don't have a point. They are have a, a square. Uh, you can kind of see they, they, they don't have a, a pointed tip, they have like a, a square cutting edge. And we use these actually in-house to cut PCBs on our PC, uh, PCB mill. We have another mill, which is a very precise CNC device that takes this and spins it really, really, really fast and cuts through the PCB um, copper layer to make uh, etched out PCBs. And since we found them so handy, we thought we would carry them in the store as well. We have them in a couple different sizes. Um, if you have a precision CNC mill, that these might be handy. This is an eighth inch shank. It's very common. These are uh, tungsten carbide um, tips, and then the body is uh, white steel, so you can you can grip onto it pretty easily with your collet. Um, they do have a, a five or eight millimeter long um, cutting edge, which is a little bit long, but they're also really low cost. So even though they're not as short as I'd like them to be. Um, they're a little bit more liable to break than the short ones. We haven't had any breakage issues. Honestly, when we cut PCBs, they get dull before they break um, because you're cutting through, you know, fiberglass or, or copper. Um, we find that they're good for like five to ten hours of cutting before they need to be replaced. But at four bucks each, you know, we can cut like five or six PCBs and we replace them. Okay. Um, next up. The, the latest. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, this is the latest four-channel oscilloscope from Regal. This is the uh, R1054Z, I think. I don't know the exact part number. It's a, a four-channel oscilloscope. It's a really great deal. If you want a four-channel scope, it's, it's like a gigahertz sample um, divided over four channels. So if you have all four channels going, you get 250 megahertz instead of a whole gigahertz. Um, but if you have one channel, it's a gigahertz. It's a color display. Oh my God, it's beautiful. It comes with probes. It's got, you know, good triggering, good software, and it's a total deal. It's under 500 bucks. This is such a good deal. When I got my Tektronix scope, it was $2,000. Now granted, the Tektronix is a really, really nice scope with excellent triggering and does all sorts of stuff that this one may not, but like really, if you're doing any kind of electronics and you need four channels, this is such a great way to get started. Um, there's even optional software you can buy to upgrade your scope with like signal decoding and stuff, but it's optional. You don't need it. Works great as a scope without that extra software, but you know, it's one of those add-on things that scope makers love nowadays. Yeah. Uh, so do check it out. It's an excellent deal if you want a four-channel scope. I have not seen anything this nice, yeah. and this is why we carry it. Okay. Um, and next up, we have some more filament. Um, no need to go over this. There's just more colors, um, blue, more types. Black. So um, this is blue Adafruit blue. Yeah, and, and so this is not Adafruit green. So we we're just it. adding all the top colors in there. So just go to the 3D printing section. Soon and we'll have see. red, and yellow, and translucent. Yeah. But we're just adding them slowly and surely. It's all Ultimaker filament, which is uh, we have found the best PLA and ABS filament. We also yeah. have flexi filament. It's all good stuff. I'll, I'll say this. Um, so people always ask, um, hey, Adafruit, I see all these 3D printing projects you guys do. Why do they always look good? And like, how, you know, how, how do you do this? A lot of it has to do with the materials we're using and the printers. And so um, we use the Tazbot and we use the, the Ultimaker uh, filament. Okay. Okay. It's LCD time. LED. LED time. LED time. It's always LCD time. It's always LCD time. But so it's, it's also, break. sometimes it's LED time too. LED time. Okay. Okay, it's all an right. LED party. Yeah, so um, I'm just going to show a bunch of Just show them all off. Photos. These are the, 14, the dual 14 segment LEDs. We have them now in many other colors. We have now white, beautiful white. We have yellow, orangish yellow, beautiful glowing color. We have yellow green, which is kind of a limey green. We have pure green, which is the higher forward voltage green, but is a beautiful blue green color. Um, and let me show these on the overhead. Yeah, because then, then I'll we'll move to the next ones. After that. Yeah, so this is. Why? Uh, this is really bright. Hold on. Let me well, you can turn off the light. Hold on. Let me uh, autofocus this. Autofocus. Go autofocus. I might not like it because of the. Um, no way. Because of the LEDs. There you yeah, go. Yeah, it's too bright. Actually, sometimes if you add more. Okay, anyways, Adding it's just light. incredibly bright, but just believe me, there's 14 segments here. Um, I should have. Uh, I'm going to diffuse it a little bit. No, it's still too bright. 
I forgot to bring my diffusing material. Okay, that's maybe a little better. I don't know if you can see it. Um, it's got 14 segments, and these are just the raw displays. This is the white one, and then let me get the uh, pure green one. We just have this set up on a, um, on a breadboard here to light up all the segments. This is the pure green. It's way too bright. Should the yellow, maybe this one. The thing is I actually really like these to be extra bright, which is why it takes us a while to get all the colors in because I'm like rejecting and accepting samples because um, I want them to be really good looking. And um, because when you multiplex them, you want them to be super bright. And we have yellow green as well. I'll just show this even though. This is also way too bright. This one's not too bad actually. Okay, so that's what it looks like. You have, you know, alphanumeric digits. And then you're like, wow, there's a lot of pins that are required to run this because you have 14 anodes or cathodes and then, you know, two of the other. Um, so in, to make it easier for you, we have a backpack. So maybe I'll show these and then we can show the photos as well. Um, so I'm going to just show the, the backpack with sockets in it so I can plug in the LEDs on the fly. So like here is the demo and I'll have pure green on this side and then yellow green on the other. Um, uh, this one shows, uh, you know, you can have um, basically the controller over I squared C. You can have it set to um, display characters or numbers. Um, we have a library for it for Arduino and Trinket, and people have ported it to other um, uh, boards like Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone or PIC or whatever. Um, so the backpack basically takes all the pins that you would normally need to control four times, four digits times 14 segments. And um, does over I squared C, so you can just say, like, light up these pixels, and it just does it automatically. And uh, most people prefer to actually have the backpack. We have the raw displays in case you want them. Um, but we have tutorial example code for this backpack. So honestly, use I squared C, two pins, and you can connect up to eight of these in a row if you want to share the I squared C pins. Okay. It's a handy backpack. All right, so Lady Ada, guess what? We're gonna run ten minutes over, so you can just spend as much time as you want okay. on this stuff. But um, I did all the LEDs. Yeah. So next up, um, these are these. These are the nice photos. Yeah, these are the nice photos. So that you we can have see these. the backpack. You just have to solder the um, the backpack together, which just means putting the uh, yeah. the color of LEDs you want onto the backpack. That's you get fun. the backpack like this, yeah. and then you connect up like the yellow or green or blue or whatever LEDs. Okay, that's a lot of LEDs. Yeah, so I'll just keep going through these photos. Okay, I'll set up the next demo while you're doing that. Okay, this is, which is this demo? Yeah, this I'm is. Be, I'm gonna be ready. This is the other uh, fr front and back of what you get. So this is, yeah, you actually get the same backpack but different color LEDs. Such as the LED colors yeah. different. Okay, next up we got a um, phone charger, right? We have thing? the we have a key charger. A key charger. Chi charger. Chi um, key we charger. have the receivers for the wireless uh, Qi protocol, and now we have the transmitter. So the, the receivers, um, you know, we've had these for a while, and they look like this, and they're these coils, and then, you know, you have to have a transmitter that sends the wireless power and then the receiver, and this is a standard now, so we have other transmitter receiver pairs, but they're, they're only for each other. They're not like a protocol. What's nice about these is actually like knows it can detect when it's connected and it, it regulates the power and it's, it's just kind of a little bit more elegant and you get exactly five volts. So um, you don't have to worry about your voltage fluctuating too much. Okay. So this is just it showing, but I'll, I'll demo this um, right now. So this is the transmitter and you power it over USB. So yeah, thanks. So you, um, you just connect it over to, uh, this is actually my USB adapter and it draws one amp out of here or maybe one amp out of here to give you a half an amp here or two amps here to give you one amp here. There's about 50% loss over the, this transmission and this reception. That's wireless power, that's how it goes. And then this is you know, a kind of a standard Android phone, for example. There's also, um, we have an adapter for iPhone and also we have just the- Pretty much any phone you want, this will go with. Raw receiver, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so this, is, this is a micro USB, which we showed on the previous. It just plugs in. And then this is the receiver side, this is the transmitter side. So when you put this on top, this LED lights up saying yes, it detected, and it's now charging. So when I remove it, it's gonna say not charging. Hold on. Well now it's like, hey, you, you turned me on. And then when you connect it, oh, come on. Man, of course not, my demo's not working, hold on. We're, uh, hold on. 
Yeah, if you put it on there. The phone, I'm just demoing it with the phone. Yeah. Anything that uses five volt and up to an amp. Yeah, can one of use the things this. that I think is going to be neat is you know people can make sculptures that are completely sealed and. That's right, and, and you put it, and it. When you put it on the base, it charges. That's it up. right. It's just like the toothbrush that you have. If you have a, a, a smart toothbrush that yeah. has a wireless base charger, so any project you want that to be waterproof or dustproof. And you want a wireless charger, you can have up to like five millimeters of material yeah. that's non-metal material. So it plastic, could be in a case glass, too. You know, you can a make case, your own case. Fiberglass, whatever. As long as it's not metal, you can have it, you know, enclosed yeah. and then charge. Okay, next up. All right. Soldering iron. Yeah. Soldering iron. This is a fancy soldering iron. And we already had a soldering iron that's like this, a pen type soldering iron that just plugs in. But this one's really nice. First off, this one has a more calibrated temperature knob on the side, which is pretty around. sweet. This goes around. Yeah. So this one, there's a little knob on the side so you can set the temperature. And I measured it with um, my, my like a thermocouple and it's, it's not like exact, right? Like you're not gonna get like exactly 280, but it's within like 20 degrees. So if you're using like silver bearing solder, lead free solder, lead solder, instead of, you know, just having an iron and just like, it just burns the hell out of everything, this will get you much better performance and it heats up very fast. It's also got a nice thick cord and it's grounded, yay. And the best part about this, which is why I carried it, is you can change out the tips and That's the handy. tips are HACO compatible. So the HACO mm. tips, which we have, which are like the best quality tips you can get, and the the real strength of the qual the quality of your tip the quality of your soldering has a lot to do about the tip, is it the right shape and size and it's it's nicely plated. This is like getting a budget hacko, like it's. A it's basically like yeah, I mean I don't want to say that because like a hacko is a is a really really nice yeah. tool. But you get all the tips not. of hacko. But you get you yeah, say, yeah, you have a ceramic heater and you get a hacko, but you don't have to have the full base and this is small and it's portable, yeah. and you can put it in your toolbox or your purse or wherever and uh, take it on the go, or you just don't wanna have a lot of space, or if you only wanna spend like 25 bucks. Um, we tested it, I soldered up a bunch of kits. It's a great soldering iron, and it's it's a step down from the full hacko, but it's it's well, it'll work quite well, much better than like a $10 soldering iron. So it's definitely worth yeah. 25 bucks. Okay. You can get, get some tips while you're at it. Next up, um, we're at the last couple of products, Lady Ada. Okay, great. It's that time okay. to debut. The Intel Edison. It Whee! is here. It is here. It is here. It is we here. We finally have them. Yeah, it's here. We have some um, unknown. You know, um, unknown if 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 the if the world is gonna say this is the next platform. There's so many choices now. We like having these choices. Yeah. Um, it's very new. There's uh, not a lot of tutorials or things yet, but it just got started. Oh, so yeah, I, I have not tried this yet. We just got these in. Yeah, so let's show you on the overhead. Like here's So the this is how big it is. So it's small. Um, and maybe I'll show that it is It is not that much bigger than a, a Pro Trinket. So it's no. quite small. And it's a full Atom processor. It's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in. And um, it's pretty intense. It's just all-in-one board. The only thing is that to get to these pins, you have to use this connector, which is a 0.4 millimeter pitch connector. It is too small for mortals to solder. I mean, you can't, you, basically you can't. I don't I want to suggest hand soldering, not a good idea. Um, unless you have the right tools. Uh, and so even though we sell it alone, I really don't suggest getting it alone unless you already have the adapter board kit. So this is the adapter board kit that you can get. And um, this slides in and plugs in and provides you with um, a USB connection and um, as well as GPIO. So you have like the USB debug and, and connect. Has GPIO, has some buttons and maybe an LED or two. I don't, I don't know exactly what's going on here. Um, I think so maybe some level shifting of some sort. Uh, so this is this, the mini breakout. Um, so this is like the, I don't know why this PCB is so thick. Kind of a mystery, but I'm sure there's a good reason. This is like a massive PCB. It's like chunky. Um, so this is the, the the basic breakout, which I think is the minimal to even do stuff with it. And then we also have the uh, uh, Arduino board, which also comes with an Edison. But the add-on board for it is is much bigger and has like it's not an Arduino, but it's Arduino esque. Right? It has it has kind of the Arduino shape. And you can plug in shields. It has level shifting on all the pins. I'm almost positive these are all level shifters. It's 1.8 volt logic. 
Um, it has USB host, so you can plug in a you know, keyboard or mouse or whatever. You plug in the Edison here, and you have a, you know, buttons and a micro USB and all sorts of extras. So, you know, it's basically like a, 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 a it's running a Linux distribution. Um, you can kind of treat it like uh, a low power, um, very small Raspberry Pi, kinda, except it doesn't have a display and it doesn't do HDMI. But it does have Wi-Fi built in and, and, and USB built in, and also you don't you don't need an SD card. It's it's self-running, most positive, right? It doesn't have, yeah, it has, it has flash on board, so you you know it's an all-in-one, and it's meant for it's it's small, so it's meant for, you know, like let's say you're doing like a, a robot and you want it to be very small, you don't want to have a full Raspberry Pi, and you don't want a full Beagle Bone on it. It's a teeny little board, you want to have wearables, maybe you want to have um, a quadcopter, and you want to have a lot of processing power on it. This would be a really good match for a project like that because it's very powerful and it's running Linux, but it also has um, this, this small form factor. It has wireless capability built in, um, but it's easy to use because it, it has Arduino IDE that you can use with it. Okay, so here's some other photos of the um, board. And this is what it looks like while it's in there. Right. And I don't then, want to plug it in because it's not meant for multiple insertions. Yeah. I do want to play with this some more. And then there is something else that you can get, which is this. Yeah, I just showed that. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, we're just going for okay. photos here. Yeah, no, but there's two different boards. There's the mini board and yeah. then the Arduino board. The mini board is less expensive, and the, and the Arduino board is bigger uh -huh. but more expensive. Pick the one you want. I would get one or the other. Uh, again, we also do have it just the module, but it's not suggested for mortals. Yeah. Okay, and then last up, this is the last new product of the night. Another Intel product. This is yeah, the, the Intel Galileo Survey. 2, right? Yes, Rev Gen 2 yeah. of the Galileo, which we actually got in like an hour before the show. Uh, so I don't have a lot of information about it. It's a lot like, I know it's basically compatible with the Galileo. I think they changed a couple pins to be uh, the raw GPIO instead of going through the GPIO expander. Check the product description. Um, the Galileo is, you know, another Intel product. This is um, a much beefier processor. Although the, I think this is their their experimentation into um, the Edison. The Edison's kind of the Galileo's little sister, I would say. Uh, the Edison is basically like a, a full fledged computer that you can program with the Arduino IDE. It's extremely powerful. Um, it's good for when well, you don't need portability because uh, it's, it's big, but you need a lot of horsepower. It's, it's very powerful. We even have a, a Tony Nicola did a write up about comparisons between the Raspberry Pi, Beagle and Black, and Galileo. So do check that out if you want more details about yeah. whether you need this power horse of a project. Okay. And with that, Lady Ada, you've I think I wrapped did them up the new products. Okay. Yay. I finished on N9. Good work. Yay. All right. So um, that was two weeks worth of new products. We had There's guests and we had all sorts of things going on. Mm -hmm. So. Good job. Um, we're going to do um, a trivia question. Um, just in a second. The code is Glamour. That gets you 10% off. Everything in stock in the Adafruit store, I think right now we're the only ones that have the Edison and the Galileo in stock that you can buy right now. And you can get 10% off. So this is the probably the only and best time to, to get these things if you're really interested in it. So that code will be active until 11.59 PM Eastern Standard Time tonight. Um, let's do. Let's give away something, and then let's get out of here. Okay. Um, trivia question questions time. Like, questions will be next week. Yeah. Tri trivia question time. Lady Ada, what are the rules? Rules are, if you've won something on this show before, you can't enter again. You can enter if you've won something on our other shows, such as Wearable Wednesdays and 3D Thursdays, but um, not this show. One winner per my lifetime. The first person to type in the answer correctly into the Ustream or YouTube chat. I think YouTube uses a little bit faster. It all depends. It depends. Like, yeah, like it's, Whatever. It type in above. It it, look, yeah. hey, win next week. Remember we'll win shippers. this 10-year anniversary uh, commemorative pro trinket. Yeah, so the prize is this. It is a Hackaday pro trinket. Um, I just said that. Hackaday has 500 of them. Um, we have like three. We have a few. Um, and so we're going to give away these. So the question is, what is the name of the logo? They've given it a nickname. It's not Skull and Crossbones. It's something else. What is the name of the Hackaday logo? Yeah, if you eat Hackaday, you know this. Yeah. So you entered a contest, because they always tell you to. Yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. 
uh, against. Against. Yeah, I even talked. I even talked about it during the chat, and I said this is probably going to be the trivia question. So good, I made good it, job. I made it really yeah, easy. Yeah, it is. But you know what I'm saying? People pay yeah. attention. You, so, I don't, you have to l listen in. You know, yeah, email support at adafruit.com. And uh, here's the thing: the support team will know um, to talk to me. Um, tell them um, that you won the Hackaday Limited Edition Pro Trinket, and uh, Phil has one for them. <laughs> so, okay, that is the show tonight. Um, okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, good work, lady. You got through all this. Don't forget Yay. the code is Glamour. Celebrating page 166 in Glamour magazines on stands now. Get a little piece of history. Samsung picking places now featured in Glamour magazine. Um, thank you, everyone. Adafruit staff, Adafruit community, all the folks that are commenting and posting, showing cool projects on the show and tell. Um, thank you, everyone out there who helps run the show every single week. We'll see everybody next week. Um, We're back to normal. Yeah. Normaler. Yeah. Tomorrow, as normal as it gets. Yeah. Tomorrow, um, I'm going to be giving away uh, in person um, some uh, soundboards. I'm going to stop by Comic Con. Yeah. If you're going so, to Comic Con New York. Yeah. So uh, we have, we think, is one of the best. Um, costume and prop soundboards, so we're going to um, uh, gift these to people who build costumes, see what they come up with. So uh, we'll see everybody next week, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. on uh, what we like to call 3D Thursday is 3D Hangouts with Matt, Noah, and Pedro. Check it out if you like 3D printing. It mm -hmm. is the best live 3D it's printing amazing. show in the world. It's amazing. I love it. With that, we have a picture of a cat. We'll see everybody next week. Here is your moment of Zener.